Uh, thank you for very much for coming today. And um, I will try to speak in English and then the important part we can go to one. Okay? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I practice medicine in Chai Bom about uh, 30 years. And I also the co-chair of the Greater Chai Civic Coalition, Today we are here because of the congestion pricing, which is just approved by the federal on June 26, 2000. Just two weeks ago. Oh, that's good. I remind. Okay, that, that, that's helpful. Okay. They did know after the pandemic, more than the economy has not recovered yet. Now New York City is going to start congestion pricing, which would be devastating to Chinatown and Little Italy. Uh, agenda, okay. Let me start with a brief history of the congestion pricing and its major problem to our area. Afterward, I will have our CCPA chair, uh, our president, uh, Raymond Chen, and our speaker to speak more about congestion pricing problem. Then, after that, we will open to everyone for comments, suggestions, and possible plans. At the end, we would like to form a coalition to work together for future action, how to do about the congestion pricing. So that's the four agenda we have here, okay? First, remember the form we're giving you? Please fill out, because that's how we can contact you for the next meeting, our next action. You know, we need your name, and your cell phone, your email, whatever. So please fill out and give it to the lady a maid and uh, Kathy here. So two beautiful women here, just give it to them. And that's very important, okay? So anyway, New York City, we have been talking about congestion pricing for the last about 50 years. It was never successful until now because NTA has such such big big deficit. That means we have to pay for it. The congestion pricing of Jackie Hai. This is our Secretary General. <laughs> <laughs> the congestion pricing is under NTA authority. The New York State Governor, uh, the NTA board is mainly appointed by our New York State governor. So New York State has authority over the MTA. And New York City actually just has little authority. Of course, New York City has input to it, but the congestion pricing does not need to be passed by New York City. It's passed by the New York State. So we know the New York State already passed the congestion pricing, and the federal just passed on June 26. So what that means is congestion pricing is not going away since it's already passed by New York State and by the federal. So it will be effective in the springtime of the 2024. Currently it's set at $23 during daytime and $17 for nighttime non-peak hours. Everybody squeeze in, everybody just, any entities, some empty room, they just, everybody just squeeze in, please. Excuse me. Yeah, we got to get some room. So for the next few months, it's very critical time for us because the Traffic Mobility Review Board, which is under MTA, they will review all the exemptions and all the requests for reduced fees. Other groups have already started lobbying for exemption, like for example Uber. You know, Uber had last money, they have big lobbying. If they want the MTA only charge them one time per day. Not if they go in and out, they still only got charged one time. Like New Jersey and the Midtown resident, 
they are lobbying. Yeah, tumble fee would be incorporated, in, included in the twenty-three dollar. They want you see, they want more than. Now you see, now you tell to my. 國家政府已經批准咗啦，我哋冇得改嗰個 congestion price， 但係問題係呢幾個月之內，我哋要做啲功夫，因為係要申請減價、申請避免，我哋啲區咪減價，因為其他區已經開始申請㗎啦，好似嗰啲 Uber 已經話佢哋一日俾一次，係中城嗰啲人咧話，要 Jazz 人啊已經話，佢哋因為佢過嗰個嗰個橋啊誒橋啊，過個 tunnel 啊嗰個誒隧道啊，每次來回都要十六蚊，咁樣佢話廿三蚊，佢借俾廿三蚊嘅啫。咁樣意思就話佢哋特別親民 ，OK？ 咁樣等於我哋唐人街咧，我哋嘅橋冇錢噶嘛，等於我哋唐人街費我哋窮人要俾廿三蚊，佢哋俾七蚊，所以如果佢哋鋪咗，我哋有問題，變咗我哋係我哋，而且我哋變 discriminated， 因為我哋唐人街要俾 twenty three dollar， 佢哋俾到 whole twenty three dollar。The the midtown They they say they want to incorporate that tunnel fee into that twenty three dollar. I mean they only pay seven dollar on top of the fifteen dollar. So everyone now is trying to lobbying to get the fee down. No one wants to pay twenty three dollar. If we had to pay twenty three dollar, we don't get together doing something now. You know, all our store, our restaurant are in trouble in in little Italy in Chinatown. Who coming to shop and eat? In Little Italy and Chinatown, and pay twenty three dollar come over and then and and, and and try to find some parking. I think many of our store restaurants are not going to not going to uh, survive. And then also, you know, many many elderly who move out of Chinatown because we don't have affordable housing in Chinatown, but they still come back here to see doctors, to see to use the community places to to you know to have you know to socialize with their friends and pay some MJ. They cannot come back because why? Because they, the children got to join them into the uh, Chinatown. What you are so yeah, some of the little one guy, do more yet, Hong Kai, Tai, and more funny, Kung Sa, Tongi Panda, King of Taiwan, and you make a lot of jelly cherry, and we will tell you the other one. And another thing is our workforce. You know, our workforce in, in this area already so so short. We, we have a big shortage of workforce. If they charge $23, remember, many workers, they don't come in by subway. They, they, they call pool to come into work. There are a few people they call pool to get better women worker because they are afraid of the subway because they say they're unsafe. If they charge them 23 dollars, you mean they can come into work in Manhattan? They change their job, they go to Brooklyn, they go to... So we might not even find people to work in Manhattan, in this area. We're going to be in big trouble. So very important, we have to get together to do something. I will let our chairman, our Madam president, and our speaker be more for about congestion pricing problem. After that, then we will open to the floor for comment and for suggestions. Also, I have some plan. I want some suggestions I want to lay out, and then you guys think about it. After that, then we're going to do something. We're going to unite together. Maybe next time we have a Zoom meeting. Maybe we can do something more. So let me uh, have uh, C CCBA President uh, Raymond Chen take over. Thank you. Dr. Chen here, so I'm just gonna take it easy. Uh, but uh, welcome everyone to the CCPA. I am the current president, Raymond. And uh, it, it's, I, I think Dr. Chen already went through most of the important points, but uh, I, I have to share like something about myself also. I am a lifelong uh, someone that's been in New York City my whole life, the five boroughs. I uh, born and raised in Chinatown, so I am very familiar with this area itself. And. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, born and raised in uh, Chinatown, and uh, I moved to Staten Island a few years ago, where I've been paying toll for the past 15 years. And uh, now I, I've been traveling to Chinatown every day for work, so I'm very familiar with tolls and everything like that. And uh, it, it's one of those things that uh, we're wondering why it's happening because uh, we're still recovering from post-pandemic. Uh, events and uh, our our community itself is already having such issues trying to struggle to revive itself and now we're facing this $23 congestion pricing that will uh, limit I guess uh, people's access to our Chinatown all our businesses are already struggling uh, with uh, trying to keep up with uh, pricing and everything like that and now 
people will have to consider, like, are people still going to come to our Chinatown when this $23 toll co goes into effect? So that, that's one of those biggest issues. And uh, aside from that, uh, it's just that in general, like, uh, there's also a lot of mention about the deficit that MTA is facing, but uh, also all the uncollected tolls that, are, that the MTA has uh, that probably would have covered this deficit between all the fare invaders uh, that have not paid their fare to use at the MTA, and uh, all the other people that have not paid their tolls by using fake license plates, fake tags. Like, th those are like big issues that the, the MTA should pay more attention to instead of trying to, uh, I guess, ask the good, honest people for more money to cover this deficit from their lazy, I guess, work, and that they're not trying to come recover all this money that they're actually owed. So. I mean, there, there's a lot more points, but uh, there's also so many people in this room, so uh, I shared my part, and uh, I'm just going to pass on the mic, and uh, I guess uh, everyone's going to eventually share what they feel about this congestion pricing. So uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Nathan. Hey, hello, everyone. Sorry, Randy, I'm going to stand, but uh, they teach you this in law school. you got to stand up. I talk a whole. Uh, Raymond said he speak in English. He said for me to speak in Cantonese, so I'm not going to go on but you go on and on and it's going to, people's ears are going to cry, so I'll, I'll do this in English. Uh, I translate for you. You can translate for me, okay. They, they call me, but okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, congestion pricing is a disaster for Chinatown and Little Italy. And, and please, it's really important. It's not just Chinatown, it's Chinatown and Little Italy. We really are one community because it affects all of us in exactly the same way. How many folks here own restaurants or stores in Chinatown and Little Italy? Come on, a lot of people. Uh, your, your customers, they're going to come and drive in and pay an extra $23? How are your restaurants and stores doing after the pandemic? You guys still have business after the pandemic? You're going to see that's going to disappear. We're not going to get our dim sum. We're not going to get our pizza. We're not going to get our pasta. We're not going to get our, 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 our tasubao in Chinatown. We'll go, to, we'll go to the Bronx. We'll go to Brooklyn. We'll go to Queens. Come on, this is crazy. The, the congestion pricing was designed to, to offset the MTA deficits by charging the rich folks over in, you know, what, what 42nd Street and 50th Street and Central Park. The, these guys, not us. Come on, this is crazy. Congestion pricing is coming, but we need carve outs. We need carve outs for the people that live here, we need carve outs for the businesses that struggle here. And that's what this is about. I don't think we can stop it from coming, but we can at least get some benefits for those that are going to be really affected by this. All right? So that's, that's what we're here for. Thank you all. Justin? Yeah, first, I'd like to thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas Chen yes. and um, Mr. Jackie Wong, organizing this uh, very important uh, community meeting. And just like uh, uh, Mr. Kusi said, this has really impact Chinatown and the Little Italy. And these two communities have been struggled since the pandemic. But uh, so far, we haven't heard too many good news from the federal, from the state, and from the city. And the only thing we heard are bad news. They are not helping us. We are trying to survive. We try to revive. But so far, we haven't received much help from all the levels of the government. And um, congestion pricing, 20 years ago, Mayor Bloomberg tried once, but was killed by the state. But this time, unfortunately, state with it. State support congestion pricing. And just like uh, Mr. Kusi said, federal already approved it. And this uh, congestion pricing is going to be implemented. What we should do now, like uh, Dr. Thomas Chen and uh, President Rima uh, said, we still have room to negotiate with the state. Maybe we cannot be limited to $23, but can we change to $3, $2, or $1? That's my dream. But one thing, they say the money should go to MTA. Because <coughs> in the MTA, we, if they charge people money, people will take MTA. But MTA in such bad shape, 
Who want to take MTA? If they want us to take MTA, first they should fix MTA, then charge congestion pricing, then charge it up $23. Then we, take, we have a choice. We take MTA to come to Chinatown. And uh, especially, I really, really disappointed about the whole process because nobody really talked to us about this issue which impact us so big, so huge, so tragically. Anybody talk to you? No. May I ask you, anybody talk to you? No. no. Did the federal people talk to you? No. no. Did the state people talk to you? No. no. Did the city people talk to you? No. no. Community board talk to you? No. no. Nobody. Nobody talked to us. But we are the people who take the burden of $23. And and $23 is not a small amount. Maybe one day, $23 I pay. But for Dr. Chen, he comes to Chinatown every day. He has to pay more than $6,000 every year. And he's patient. What choice Dr. Chen has? He's going to move his clinic to Brooklyn. And all his patients follow him to Brooklyn. Because they don't have to pay $23. They only have to pay ten dollar copay to Dr. Chen. <laughs> <laughs> I made <made> so, that. <laughs> so we have uh, we have so many doctors, hundreds of doctors practice in China. I doubt many of them live in China. Very few. If all the doctors are gone, all the accountants are gone, all the bookkeepers are gone. All the people who serve us, all the dr druggists are gone, pharmacists are gone, and they, customer, will leave us too. What do we have left? And nobody come here to go and come to our restaurant because plus 20% tips, they have to pay another $23 to park your car to come in. So this is life and death for our community. We didn't say anything before. That's an output. But we are going to say something now. We are going to reverse this situation. We have been suffering long enough. Now is, we, we can tell the federal, the state, even the city, which city has no direct control to this congestion pricing. But we have to let the mayor know. We don't agree with you. You support congestion pricing, we don't. This is our community, Little Italy and China. This is the only community we have. We live here. My grandchildren study in Chinese school out there. If they have to pay $23 every day from Long Island to Chinatown, I don't think I can afford the tuition fees to pay Mr. Uh, to pay President Ritter. <laughs> <laughs> we still have time. Now I beg you, all of you, we have to get together, become one unified voice yeah. against twenty-three dollars. Yes. Against twenty-three dollars, yeah. it's not fair. United States of America, it's not only for rich people. Rich people can pay. They can pay $2,300 to come to, come to Manhattan. But how about poor people? They try to survive every day. $23, you add it up. Five days, 115. We have 50 some weeks. How much do you have to pay? We will not allow this to happen to us. We are not allow people killing us gradually. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, 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 uh
今日呢、這個呢、這個要唔會話二十三蚊？誒，二十三蚊唔係話好大嘅數目，亦唔係好細嘅數目。但喺我哋單攤嚟講咧，係一個好重要，對我哋中國城，或者對我哋啲商家，對我哋啲啊喺度做生意嘅。如果你每一日都要呢個二十三蚊嘅收費落過嚟堂街，我相信在座，如果你哋喺出邊洗車入嚟，你哋會唔會洗車？冇辦法接通。洗車。你洗車 ，OK。你洗車 ，OK。一日一個禮拜洗幾多次？一日。一日。哇！洗啊 ！OK。咁啊，咁啊，嗰啲錢咧要喺邊度嚟？嗱，同時仲有一樣嘢，我想講嘅就係唐人街。我哋亦有好多餐館，亦有好多生意啊，好多嘢。但係我哋喺唐街呢啲公所或者啲橋社，幫嗰啲幫大家啲橋橋包嚟做嘢嘅，係咪？我哋喺出嚟服務係義務嘅，啱嘛？義務嘅係冇錢攞嘅，係。最多或者俾翻三兩蚊你飲杯咖啡啦 ，OK？ 誒誒誒，即係義務，我唔緊要。呢啲係我哋為啲唐人、為啲苗包、為呢個社區去做嘢。但係如果你話叫我出唔出咧，學你話事仔，我俾。但係我一個禮拜俾得幾多次咧？俾到我冇錢嗰陣時，我我喺邊度攞咧？嚟 ，OK， 我俾。一個禮拜我出五日，但係而家或者一個禮拜我出一日。或者食，甚至如果我要食餐或者落頭街做乜，我唔會去搭出嚟咧。我一個人我或者會，如果我帶埋我屋企人二十幾人出嚟食餐飯，點樣點樣去搭出嚟？係，咁樣有冇一個辦法咧？有辦法，我可以喺嗰度，我唔可以落頭街，我去佛城，嚟佛城我唔需要啦，我洗車去到有人泊車添，啱嘛？咁我我好方便啦，咁啊變咗堂街咧已經係一個人少一次，一個人少一次，堂街就變咗冇曬冇曬生氣噶啦，已經冇曬咩做生意好難又好食，所以呢我哋儘量係去爭取，正話啊啲主席啊啲啲辦理人啊都安樂都。將情形都講過曬，我都唔需要點講，但我係講我自己嘅問題。呢個問題唔直接係講話我自己，但實在就係在座每一位都可能發生嘅問題，啱嘛？咁所以我哋呢個係盡我哋嘅力去做，睇點樣去減低呢個收費消費，或者佢哋另外一個辦法唔去啊用呢個二十三蚊嘅。用其他個方法，好多方法咧個經費喺邊度嚟？喺聯邦或者喺啊啊馬場啊，或者其他嘅嗰啲收費就入入嚟俾我哋嘅，啱唔啱啊？我哋可以申請攞呢啲啊，應該要喺我哋呢度每一日架車二十三蚊。如果我哋請架車落嚟，嗰架車你係 Uber， 你講嘅 Uber 收我哋幾多錢？好貴，仲要加埋啲二十三蚊嘅，你要收收唔收？我唔知道。如果係咁樣嘅，我哋出一次街話要要百幾蚊喎，係咪？淨係踢架車要百幾蚊咯，咁我點食餐啊？誒，我所講嘅就係希望大家有一個辦法出嚟，大家俾啲意見出嚟，點樣去改善呢、這個，同埋 start 佢哋改良呢、這個，睇佢哋另外另外一個方法去做呢樣嘢啊。O K 啦，我所講嘅就係咁多。相信大家心中都知道係呢啲，頭先佢哋個個都講過啦。希望你哋大家有咩好嘅意見，發表出嚟啊 ！O K， 多謝多謝。點樣？講講講先。林生，你。你。哦。Hi, my name is Steven. Steven Chang. I'm a very active. Board member as a China Heart Beat. Uh, like everyone says, so the congestion price will stay, will come in soon. But we try to, you know, uh, the, the organize. What I suggest is the more organized uh, from 60th Street, uh, let's say it's uh, uh, Times Square Beat, 
<coughs> so whole big. We should organize those a bit. The big is a business improvement district. This will be affecting all the business downtown Manhattan. So I suggest you uh, know we organize all of it and with local association to fight this unfair what I say is a discriminatory uh, action against lower Manhattan because only Manhattan. I suggest that we should ask them to impose congestion price to all borrowers. Fraction is a congestion, a lot of traffic congestion. Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn is a congestion. They should have all the borrowers impose congestion price in order to, you know, just discriminating our downtown Manhattan area. And we, we get a, 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 a unfair treatment and unfair <laughs> The, uh, the competition from the other boroughs, the restaurants, shoppings, you know, we, we, we are in a disadvantage in downtown area. Uh, that's what I suggestion, you know, uh, the, the we should organize more, not just, not just Chinatown, you know, uh, we literally, literally uh, to get together. We need to organize all the uh, 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 big, especially big, because big means improving business in the history. So the bishop acting as a more active in this issue. And that, uh, we should be fair, fair competition. If every borough has a con such congestion price on them, so we compete each other. You know, we just not just a deep, Right now we have a disadvantage because only imposed to Manhattan or Manhattan. That's unfair. That's what I suggest. Yes. Yeah, I will. I will bring up to the to the big association. Uh, Susan, uh, you want to speak? Susan, uh, Hi. Good afternoon. Um, on May 15th, I wrote an op-ed in the Daily News about how congestion pricing is going to really decimate the local economy in Lower Manhattan. Um, right now, you look at Lower Manhattan. It is one of the most tourist-rich neighborhoods in Manhattan. If you add $23 to every car that comes in, people are gonna come. Businesses will suffer. You look at Chinatown, you look at Little Italy, you look at the Grand Street Corridor. These are naturally occurring retirement communities where seniors live. They cannot afford $23 to go see their doctor. It's not about coming into the zone. It's within the zone you still have to pay $23. And I don't think that people understand that. There is this regressive taxation. I've been working with groups um, north of 61st Street on um, the fight against congestion pricing and for exemption. And the reason why is because they're afraid that pollution will um, increase north of 61st Street because people will drive around there, park their car and take the subway into the congestion zone. I've been working with a group in Battery Park City. What happens in when cars are coming into um, Lower Manhattan, if you use the West Side Highway and the East River FDR Drive, you do not have to pay that $23. Again, pollution will be um, increased in those two corridors. Pollution knows no boundaries. And I think that that's one of the things that we need to emphasize is that there's gonna be increased pollution in the perimeters along the congestion zone. And the pollution's gonna come into our district regardless if um, cars are coming in. So I think one of the things that we really need to um, focus and emphasize, and I agree with um, Stephen, is that we need to work with other communities. It's not just you know, lower Manhattan issue, it is actually um, a citywide issue if you look at the pollution, because it's gonna go to the Bronx, Staten Island. And these are some of the names that I want you to keep in mind. Dan Goldman, right to him. Chuck Schumer, right to him. Kirsten Gillibrand, right to her. Brian Kavanaugh, right to him. Deborah Glick, who is a representative on the left side, right to her. 
Grace Lee, write to her. Christopher Martin, write to him. These are your elected officials. They should be fighting for the exemptions for you. That is why you elected them to be in office to represent your interests. And if they're not representing your interests, you need to let them know. So that's what I need with you is we as a community can no longer sit here as sheep and waiting for federal government, state government to slaughter us and take money from us. As people in the working class uh, families, we can't afford it. So we need to write to our elected representative and let them know that no, this is not okay. And I agree with Justin. We didn't ask for it. No one consulted with us. So now we need to let them know that this is not okay. Uh,大家好,帮助我们参加这个会议,真的,陈医生,马威文主席,他们现在是一个事实的,一定是。是不是这个方法是否能够这么做呢事实是这样的希望将这个价钱减低一点这个是切磋的办法如果你是否可能的事实如果是否可能我应该就去替大家集中的力量发动的人就是示威也好不能去同政府讲数也好不能去争取这个
uh, I, there are just so many negatives to it. And I agree, we need to uh, make alliances. One of the alliances has to be New Jersey's governor, who is going to fight this on the city level. We have to, as Susan said, fight with our, let our elected officials on the state and also the local level know that's our position. We have to get out there. We need some press conferences. We need to make alliances with people in Little Italy and in other areas of the city. Because if you read the articles in the uh, local newspapers, you will find there are many allies, thousands of allies. We need to reach those people. And unfortunately, the New York Post is one conduit because uh, they are strongly against congestion pricing. They just had an article in the newspaper. We need to work with them. So build alliances and business alliances, etc. Thank you. Hey, hello there. I got all. Hi, I'm Bernard. Uh, I am someone who comes to Chinatown every day. I need to drive from Fresh Meadow all the way to Chinatown every day. Putting in this congestive pricing on that is really killing my pocket, and I can guarantee it to a lot of people who are here. I deal with a lot with seniors. Seniors have to drive, have to be driven to down uh, to Chinatown area, to downtown area. One for their health care, second for their gathering, for their mental health care. And that becomes overly expensive for them to even get together to meet their friends and family. This is something going to be impacting the community by itself. But at the same time, did anyone come to us and ask us how we feel? What do we need? Remember a couple last week, or oh, so ago, you guys remember to vote? Did the person you vote for speak up for you on this issue? No. Does it work that piece, that little bit of ink that you mark for that person? So this is very important, you mark what, you vote for what you believe in, you vote for your own value. And if that guy or that person or that lady is not helping you out, then you've got to remember that during the election also. You've got to make yourself yes. sound, okay? Yes. They're talking a lot about pollution, about green energy. That's another law that's coming along, it's local law 97. They are putting heavily onto green energy. They are changing all the complex, all the co-op, and they say it has to be green energy. They are taking away the gas stove, they are taking away wood oven pizza. <laughs> this is very important to do, okay? So, we got to come together and we got to say something, we got to make it out loud to make sure the government hear us, to make sure the elected officials hear us, and make your action count. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jackie, could we hear from some little Italy folks too? Sure. Yes. Emily, Emily, thank you. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. <coughs> Hi. I'm Vivian, I'm president of St. Gennaro, and I'm uh, very active in the Lima Little Italy Merchants Association. Um, we Italians, we don't necessarily come to meetings, but we do have a vote. Uh, we show up at almost every Chinatown uh, rally that there is. We come to support Chinatown. Uh, congestion pricing will really impact on the businesses. I own a restaurant, I am not doing well. Uh, the weather is getting better, schools are out, hopefully we are going to do better. But with this congestion pricing, we will suffer. So I'm on board with this group, and I will have our group on board. And like I say, although we don't show up for the meetings, we do have a voice. Yes, good. Can you pass the mic to the back? Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Howard Chen. Uh, I'm a property owner here in Chinatown. Uh, I just said that the MTA is so poorly mismanaged that it's not going to end with congestion pricing. Don't forget that we have four free bridges coming to Manhattan. The, the Williamsburg, uh, the Manhattan, the Brooklyn, and the Queensboro Bridge. They also have to tow these bridges. So, you know, 
this is not the end, and we have to fix the MTA because uh, they don't know how to manage things. That's number one. Number two, no way that I hear is that there'll be some kind of carve out for the hours. Uh, right now, uh, they want to do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So tell me where is the congestion at 1 o'clock in the morning, at, uh, at 4 o'clock in the morning. Why do you still need to charge $23 for those hours? So there is an ulterior motive, and not a good motive. So you know, we should uh, shake up the MTA. We can make them accountable for their spending. Thank you. No, uh, let me say something first and then we will open back for like future suggestion and comment and more, you know, what we're going to do. We can, we're not going to just sit there and talk and walk out. That's useless, right? Mm -hmm. So, the key is, I totally agree with you. We had to work with other group. I don't think we are strong enough. But we had to organize ourselves first. We cannot just go and say, I'm Dr. Thomas, can I join you? That's meaningless. It's a no meaning. Uptown, people look at you, who are you? So we had to organize out as a coalition of this area. And then we joined the other area, like DID, you know, we had to join. So we cannot just join themselves as a single person. So the key is, that's why we're here today, we, fought, we want to form our coalition. Hopefully, with this core group, we can get bigger. Get your friend, join, and join, everybody join. Then later on, we can have a Zoom meeting, get everybody, and plan for the next action, what to do. So I, I have a few suggestions from all my friends. What should we do? Of course, it's a suggestion, okay? Then later, we'll open up for comment, and what should we do, all right? So, got the easiest thing, as we said, it. The cheapest we can send in letter and email campaign, as you, you already mentioned before. And then we can meet with our elected official because they're supposed to be representing us. So we should complain to them. Even though, for example, New York City don't have the authority over, but they do have input to it. So our councilmen, for example, they should be able to bring up our voice, our thing to the city hall, and maybe I have to go up to, this, to the New York State and do something. And remember, the congestion pricing already approved by the New York State, by the federal, that means it's no more term turning back. It will go. But very critically for the next few months, remember I say the traffic mobility review board is considered the sixth fourth member. It's under MTA. And they're gonna look at all the requests from every neighborhood, every profession. What kind of request that you want, what kind of extension, what kind of reduce fee. So we don't do now, we just sit here, and up Chinatown will be the only neighborhood, and then this little Italy, Chinatown will be the only neighborhood in this area, in the whole Manhattan, we are the one paying $23. Yep. Yep. And they not, because Midtown already saying, let's incorporate the Midtown tunnel into $23. You know how much cost, cost them to $8 one way to Midtown, out $18, $8, $8, $8, $16, right? That mean what that mean? Midtown people only paying $7. 7 plus 60, because they only pay 60 right, to, to cost the Midtown, right, for example, or cost the Lincoln Tunnel. So if they incorporate into the $25, they pay, they pay $7. Because they don't mind pay $7 more. But what happened here? We had to pay the whole $23, and we are the poor neighborhood. Right? So the key is we can do a few things sending letters and email campaigns and whatever. But then, if we go further, be honest. You want someone to hear us, to hear our voice? We, if we just, um, like, I'm, compa I'm, I'm campaigning in CCPA here. Hello, 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 who, who gonna hear me? Nobody. So you really want to do it further? We could get lobbying team and a public relations team. They could get your voice, your message, right to the MTA board, right to the uh, traffic mobility review board. Of course, that will cost money. All right. I just hear some figure. Of course, I don't mean we're going to do it, but I just let you guys know, have some idea how much it costs. Uh, I thought of a friend, you know, he will treat it like a friend because he said we are friends. So they will treat it a better price. They will charge about five to ten thousand dollars a month to do the lobbying for us. Five to ten thousand dollars. And then you hire another PR firm, a good PR firm, right? They do the public relations, I mean. 
So it would be another five to ten thousand dollars. But think about it. We're not paying them for the whole year. The critical time is the next three months. We had to get our extension, our reduced fee in the next three months, not, not the whole year. So, so that means that's why they charge so much because they're not going to work for you for the whole year. And then another thing, we go more extreme. Actually, uptown, already not uptown, midtown already has some group. They already setting up, they were ready for go, for go to sue the MTA, go to the court. I already know a guy, a lawyer, his name is uh, Koe Borek. He is a government a civil case lawyer. Their group is ready to go for lawsuit. And actually, they don't ask us for money. They want more people to join them so they get more power, more manpower, more voice. So if we're willing to join them, they're happy to take us in. Of course, we can contribute when we can donate some money. That's actually the fruit group up there are ready to go. Remember New Jersey Mayor, uh, Governor uh, Murphy, Governor Murphy, yesterday just announced on the newspaper they're ready to go to shoot MTA, New York City. They said, why New Jersey people had to pay the tax, $23, for your stupid MTA mistake? You don't know how to manage a VYV to get that to pay. So same thing, if New Jersey can bring a lawsuit, we can bring a lawsuit too. Yes. Do they look at our, our poor people here, we need to in and out? Remember our population in Chinatown now, actually we know it's coming down, right? Yes. Lots of young people moving out, we have lots of elderly live here. Do they have purchase power? Not too much, we know that. So we need actually, we, this area, like it, Little Italy and China, we very rely on outside visitors to come in, yes. to eat and shop. $23 will kill the whole Chinatown and whole Italy. Uptown, Midtown, there are more residents, okay? There are more high wine, more big condo. They may have, those people have money to come down and be eating or whatever. Do we have fancy condo, like million dollar condo here? No, we don't. We have most of here, the, the housing here, a rent control or subsidized housing. So we, this area, we really rely on outside visitors, especially and say, uh, Justin say, uh, people come in to see doctors. The, the, the kids, children bring them, their grandparents come to see doctors. Do they come in and go? No, they don't. Usually they come in, they sit there and eat and do some shopping before they go. No one just come in China and just go, okay? They, remember, they had to wait two hours for doctors anyway, right? So, <laughs> yeah, two. So, so what they do in the two hours? They go out and eat and shop and do something. And then they make Chinese. And then also, remember lots of elderly, whoever moved out to China, they still come back to visit, you know, in the community centers. So I mean, the key today, that's why we want this paper. Everybody fill out. We're going to uh, organize this. Then we can call everybody, email everybody. We're going to set the next Zoom meeting. Hopefully, you can bring your friend or everyone to join this. We can make this group big enough. We, have, we must have a critical mass. We cannot go up town to say, let me join you. They say, how many people do you have? We have 10 people. They say, come on, I don't care. <laughs> they don't care. So if we have like a 500 people, 1,000 people down here, they're happy to take you. And the other guy will say, you don't have to pay us legal fee because we just want people to, to go to the court. We got enough people to fight. The, the, the lawyer there are ready to go. And New Jersey has to solve the lawsuit. Of course, there's another extreme. You want to do an easy way? We, then we need some donation for lobbying fee, PR fee. You know, we can go up to maximum like sixty thousand dollars because you talk about, for example, for three months, right? Five to ten thousand uh, dollar PR firm, five to ten thousand uh, dollar, um, you know, lobbying firm. Be honest, if we really want to fight, we need that. Why? I'm just campaigning here, like what I'm saying now here. Do you think government hold you gonna hear me? She don't. She don't know who the hell this guy talking about. I don't even know you. That's what the other lobbying firm for. They will bring your message up there. So if we want to do it very seriously, we could do all that. Sending letter, email, meeting our elected officer, and poll tax, we should do all that too. On top of that, if we're very serious, we should have our lobbying firm or PR firm. If you don't have the money, come up. Then we should join the uptown team, like we should, we should get together, even starting a legal lawsuit. They're doing that. They've got uptown, they're already like two or three people doing that. New Jersey governor is doing that. Why not us? 
We should do it. But then the key is we have to get together. We must form our coalition first. <laughs> I cannot do my job. I stop the conversation and go to the New York City. So let me introduce a few of the key people here. Justin uh, and uh, Edward will be our town hall, town hall. will be our coordinators. Any question, come go, go to town hall stand by. Let people look at you. Look at your face. He looks he, he look like me. Yes. <laughs> We have three forehead and four. Four this. So we be the coordinator for the future action. But so the key is on. we want to get all your name, all your email, all your cell phone, so we next time we can set a like Zoom meeting. And then and then we can go from there because we want you guys to be cool more friends to join us. I know someone cannot come to the meeting because today's one PM, you know, it's hard for people to come. We can have another meeting later on. But we have to do it quick because what? The review board for the next three months, they will decide. If, if we don't complain now, and the other side complain, they give them like $10, for example, right? Oh, they complain a lot, give them $15, $10. Yes. And China, no one complain, what happened? Yeah. We had $23, we would be the stupidest people in all Manhattan paying $23. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, <音>我們今天講完了之後寫完了之後沒有放強不是我們現在最重要的聲音的反對是再講我們都是反對但是呢反對了之後一定要預做一些東西做一些具體做一些那譬如呢你剛才說的那些呃呃呃呃呃呃
Pretty soon we are going to, uh, I have all my assistant over there. Would you stand up uh, on my intern, my assistant? Stand up. Let everybody see you. So, those people are my, my summer interns. We already send uh, letters to the governor, to the mayor, to the elected officials, but we continue to send. If you have any email, you have any letters, you have anything you want to send, you don't know the email address, we, we are already send, who we sent to, uh, Harry? Who, who did you send to the other day, the uh, congestion price? A uh, speaker of the assembly, uh, New York Speaker Assembly. Uh, okay, we uh, we have all in the computer. You can uh, you can get a copy from there. Okay, we prepared the letter. Uh, we have a straight form of the letter we sent to the governor, to the mayor, uh, to uh, the state assembly, to uh, the majority leader and the deputy majority leader, the city council speaker, and our just like uh, uh, Susan suggested. suggested. We are we are already did. We we sent to uh, 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 Kavanaugh. We sent to Grace Lee. Uh, Deborah Clayton. We didn't send. We sent to uh, uh, council person uh, Chris Martin, and uh, we sent quite a few people. Yeah. So uh, if anybody want a copy of letter uh, after the meeting, you can uh, uh, you can get it from them. We have three forms of the three different letters. We sent a lot. Uh, this is just uh, on my behalf as a district leader. We, we, we did this. But uh, from now on, uh, according to Dr. Chen said, we all belong to this coalition against congestion pricing of the lower Manhattan. And uh, later on, we are going to have an e official email address. We are going to have an official uh, mailbox. And uh, but in the meantime, you can use my office. My office, I, I, uh, I can tell you again, ADA East Broadway, room 153. Okay, what you suggestions, you have email, you, you have letter to mail, email to governor, we will be very happy to do it for you. Uh, to governor, to speaker. Oh, okay. 如果大家有什么信, 要送给州长、送给市长，你们不知道怎么送的话，我们可以帮你送。我们可以帮你email过去，帮你可以帮你fax过去。我们有所有的address，我们有所有的那个啊民选官员的地址，我们都有。我们已经送过了啊，送送给
congestion pricing. I fully support this panel and all the effort that CCPA is doing to let our community's voice be heard. And this is so important because our business depending on our good policies. But current city council and current assembly and the legislature ignore our community's needs. And I will be the voice and advocate for you in city council.我会成为大家的声音我想发给大家知道 uh, I will fully fight 